Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. Sebastian Michael. Thank you so Welcome much. Welcome back. I'm How so happy you, my you said my name and he didn't say Pharrell this time. I'm, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. You did have a lot of Pharrell vibes last time. Last though. time I had the hat. It's <laughs> been like, what, five years since you've been here? Five, six years, yeah. Wow. What's Man. been going on since then? Man, just been uh, been working, figuring out, you know, my, my sound, my music, life, mm-hmm. everything, you know? Do you have yeah. to live life to create when you're like a, mm-hmm. a real writer as yourself? Yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I didn't think like that when I when I was experiencing life. It just happened. You know, I was broke and I found other means of, of you know, other revenues to make ends meet and to, mm-hmm. you know, make a living. So, you know, it definitely helped my writing process. And that's the most important aspect of my music is just people relating to my stories and being able to relate to, to my life. It's know? been a while, though. Yeah. What, what's, what's, yeah. what's been so long? Yeah. Thank you, man. Uh, I mean, it took like two years for me to really figure out like the music that I wanted to make because mm-hmm. I, I loved so many different styles of music. And uh, in the beginning, it was more the label pushing me to do what they thought was fitting for me. It was working, uh, though. It was working. I'm not mad it happened. For you, it was working commercially, but for you and your heart, that's not mm-hmm. what you wanted. You weren't happy. It's not, yeah. I, you know, I, was just, I was just telling Ron, like, I wasn't feeling passionate. And that was like my main thing. Mm. When I felt when I felt like I wasn't passionate about the music I was putting out, it actually drove me to you know party more and do all the other shit that comes with it. I, mm. I mean, uh, what were you looking for? Like when you say you had to go party more and you like know, you how, like you was taking advantage of the industry, but what exactly. were you looking for? So you know, how, like when you you know when you when you're an artist, it's a lot of things that come with it. Mm-hmm. You know, parties and certain events and you know all of that stuff. If you're not okay. pa- if, right, if you're not if you're not passionate about the music. Um, it's easier for you to drive into that and to get sucked into that. So you indulge in life. Yeah, and then too much. and then I realized I'm like, okay, I gotta really figure my shit out and and get serious. By know? the way, those are the most soulless moments in this business. Yeah, that's yeah. when you feel like you have no soul whatsoever. Like right. you're just floating. That's when you really get lost. Yeah, yeah. that's when you get sucked in. And you you start seeing like, I mean, drugs and all of that. You know, it's like you know you get you get exposed to that being in the industry and then. Whenever you feel like you're not filled and you're not satisfied with the with the art that you're putting out, it's easier to get into those type of things. Was know? it so, serious enough that you had to seek professional help, or were you able nah, to handle it yourself? I was able to handle it myself. You That's know, not an easy thing to do either. It's not. It's not. Um, I just, you know, I think one of the biggest things was was losing my best friend, and and that kind of woke me up. How did you lose? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, what I happened? Oh, uh, him. Uh, we um during the time, you know, I was. I was selling weed and I was selling coke, and you know, this is after, after music? music. Yeah, wow. Yeah, because I, I I was I was broke. I didn't make no money from the, you know, it got to the point where I I just kind of, I had to fall back to. I wasn't passionate. I wasn't happy. You know what I'm saying? So I had to like fall back to figure out what I wanted to do, and I started like getting day jobs, and I got fired, and it really, you know, we was both desperate for money. Like, what, kind trying to, what, what kind of day, kind of day job? job? I worked at a smoke shop. I got fired from that. So wait a smoking so, everything? So after nah. you came here last time, five years ago. I only got ago, high the first day. And you released the the record and you were mm. on the road. Yeah. This is when all this happened. So you started working, taking day jobs and all that? Well, it wasn't happening while I was putting out the music. It kind of just like simmered down. Like a lot of it was started dying down. And I could have kept putting out stuff, but I just didn't want to like keep going in, the, in this direction. I wanted to like figure out what I wanted to do, first of all. So it was it was really <laughs> like, like I said, it was it was just a sacrifice that I made. I didn't want to make money uh, doing something I didn't love doing. What did your management say? Because I remember Kevin Lyles was managing you at that time. Yeah, yeah. He was, um, I mean, he was like always trying to, I mean, he was mentoring me, you know? He uh, he wanted the best for me. He was looking out. But it's really up to me. It's like really, I got to be the one that, I got to be the, the leader. You know what I'm saying? I have to be the captain of my own ship and know exactly the style of music we're making, my brand. Mm-hmm. what we're putting out so it just got to a point where i felt kind of lost because i had other people making the music for me I, I i didn't feel like i could be creative and express myself so what other day jobs you know? did you oh, have besides the smoke shop yeah and did you ever say how your friend got killed Mm-mm. he got shot and killed uh. um and i was with him the same day i was supposed to be with him when he got shot and he dropped me off at the studio to mix my my first ep that i put out last year mm-hmm. and um 
And you named that in honor of him. In honor of him. Uh, I named it. So basically our idea was to invest the money we was making, doing what we was doing into our clothing brand and into my music. And in the midst of that, he, he passed. He died. And, you know, I named it our clothing brand. And uh, he's part of everything I'm doing. You know, he's, he's a big part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that woke me up. Mm-hmm. That made and you leave the streets me. alone after that? Definitely. And that brought Definitely. you back to music? Yeah. yeah. Right. I was already making oh, music, already but that read. was a confirmation for me. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, I always believe that you got to look for, for the gift and the tragedy. And, and I was like, just praying, trying to figure out, you know, what my what the plan was. You know? so the fact that you got a regular job after all of that says a yeah. lot about you. It does, no, it does. So a lot of people can't do that after getting that fame and that, you yeah. know what I mean? Being in the industry, like, I'm not, I can't get a regular job. Right, no, that's how I felt. Know, so people know who you were when you were in the smoke shop? Um, Not really. I was in Boston. I was like, I was in the hood, so nobody really, I didn't really not. It would happen, you know what I mean? It would happen, but it wasn't like a regular thing for me. Mm-hmm. What other jobs did you have besides the smoke shop? That was it. Just After that, I was like, I'm not doing this regular job thing. Because I, I wanted to be able to create music and still make a living. So what? when you started making calls, did people answer them? Like when you called guys like Ron Stewart and said, y'all want to get back? Um, honestly, I didn't think nobody was going to rock with music, the the stuff that I was making. Or when I came up with a whole, I made a whole album myself. And um, I came to Ted Lucas, Slip and Slide. And I played him the, the project, and he loved it. Wow. And that's when I called my boy. I was like, yo, he <laughs> actually loves the project, so we good, you know? How did you know Ted Lucas? I was signed to Ted. Oh, you were signed yeah. to him first, and then he... Right. So you're still signed to him. I'm still signed to Slip, yeah. But through Atlantic, okay. Well, yeah, Atlantic, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a partnership. Okay. Thing. But, um, yeah, you know, I played him the project, and that kind of changed everything, because we wanted to invest our own money into the music. So when he was like, let's go, you know, let's, let's push this... Um, you know, that kind of like changed the dynamic of everything. And then from there, Atlantic got interested. Uh, Atlantic felt like, I felt like they kind of, they liked more songs out of the batch of songs that I had. So mm-hmm. I felt like, okay, they, they understand the sound and what I'm trying to do. So Why not that's how it happened. That's, that was my, I mean, that's kind of how I grind, you know. Mm-hmm. I got, I, I, I'll, you know, I do the best I can. And if I, if I get help from like, other labels and, and majors, I'm I'm happy, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not it's definitely not hurting me. It's hard for artists sometimes to take that break and come back, especially because you were pretty new when you did yeah, take a break. Yeah, yeah. So, were you happy to see the reception that people had when they saw you putting out some new music? Beyond, like I was like really thrilled, because people, you know, I had I had fans from before where I felt like when you when you put out, to me, it's almost like. When you just put out music and you're trying to like get songs played on radio when there's no substance behind it, you know, the fans that you get are all from radio platforms and it's not grassroots fans. And I kind of felt like, you know, I still have fans from before, but a lot of them wasn't rocking with with the music I'm making now or just be, me being myself. Like they, they didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. So my whole thing was I wanted to just put it out and, and start from, from scratch, you know what I mean, from the beginning and just build up. How was your mental health during this time period? Did you get depressed? Yeah. Low self-esteem? Yeah, all of it. Yeah. All of it, you know. You just gotta, like I say, you gotta just keep pushing and, um, you know, I have faith in God. You know, I, 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 you know, I really just like put my faith in God and just, it just worked. How bad did the drug problem get? It didn't get, it didn't get like really serious what I had, you know, I had to go to rehab and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It just uh, as soon as I noticed it, I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta chill because I don't want it to, you know, ruin my career. Did something or, happen or fuck in up the music? Like one day, it was a bad experience, and you were like, you know what, I gotta relax. Re- yeah, uh, I had I had a few nights where I was like, okay. <laughs> one time I got so like I was so trash, I fell down the stairs, and I was like, okay, I feel sloppy right now. <laughs> I gotta. I gotta do something. No like what, what, what I can't it, be doing. Th- was it pills, weed, drugs? I mean, I said drugs. <laughs> coke. It was, it alcohol. was, it was, you know, alcohol and and coke, yeah. you know. That's that um, LA life, boy. Yeah, yeah. I had to, I had to just quit, you know. And I'm happy. I haven't been, I haven't done coke since since I quit, and it's been like a year. You didn't have to do like you didn't go to no re- rehab at all. Just I didn't, it didn't get that serious. Got you, got you, got you. You know, it was, it, it, I got addicted, but it didn't get that serious. 
What, yep. what, introduce, what introduced you to Coke? Because I'm always from, like just curious. What was her like, name? <laughs> I know it was a woman. Uh, <laughs> 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 Uh, it was, it was, uh, it was just parties, you know. It definitely, I think it was a girl. It was, it was just parties, you know, mm-hmm. going to certain things and you know, like after hour joints and stuff like that in LA. Um, but yeah, uh, let's let's get off the cocaine though. Yeah. Let's talk about music. Yeah, let's talk about music. Off the cocaine. <laughs> right, yeah, right, 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 right. Also, would indicate that you went through some heartbreak as well. Mm-hmm. Did that mm-hmm. happen during this uh, period of time? Also, did yeah, that it did. It did. She's right there. That's that's my girl. Well, you know, we just went through a lot. Mm-hmm. And um Oh, so you we, weathered the storm though, you guys. Mm-hmm, we got back together and, and things so That's good because she really hurt you, it felt like. Yeah, I mean <laughs> you know it was <laughs> you hurt her. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah She's like, both Come on, like it tell was the truth. it was it was tell mutual. Truth, it was definitely <laughs> like it was both of us, you know, it was like I did a lot of things that that hurt the relationship and hurt both of us. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. So, you know, it was just, it got um pretty toxic, mm-hmm. you know? You think part of it was a newfound fame and everything, and then... Yeah, I, th- I think part of it was, I mean, uh, honestly, it was, it was just my behavior, you know? You started feeling yourself? It was, not nah, during that time, it was cool. But it was like <clears throat> what we was talking about before, mm-hmm. you know, partying and, and just... Mm-hmm. Doing all that. So she was with you through all of that from the all beginning. Of, when you first put out the music, when you had your downtime, yeah, and back. all of it. Wow. How did you wow. mend things? Because a lot of guys always ask, "Me and my girl broke up. I know I messed up. How do I get her back? What were some mm. things that you did to make it work?" Um, just honesty, showing that you you changed, and um, yeah, just not. I didn't want to say nothing. You know, I didn't want to be like, you know, I'm 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 changed now. Like, you know. I didn't want to say nothing. I just wanted to. We just started seeing each other again, and and she saw it. The best you know what I'm saying? Like change behavior. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like she actually saw a change in me, mm-hmm. and um, and it just made sense. Do you believe yeah. him? Did you believe him? Oh. <laughs> She's like, I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here, right? Yeah. Do you have to talk about when you want to put certain things in the music, though? Like if you want to talk about certain things with her, do you have to rent it by her first? She get mad about certain things that I put in the music, okay. um, and I just got to be like, you know, it's not. It's not to like throw you under the bus or make you sound bad, you know. It's just I gotta be, I gotta say it the way I see it, you know, in order for people to relate to me. And she gets that, you know. She understands that. For sure. All right. Well, the album, well, the EP or album? EP. EP. EP, EP part one, is part two. out this Friday. Make sure you pick it up. Yes. The name of the EP again is I See You, You See Me, Part Two. And we appreciate you for joining us and being Thank so honest. Thank you so much. Yo. Is it only Definitely. two parts or is there a third part coming to Uh No, it's only two parts. Okay. So part one we released late December last year and then the second one just came out, so... Definitely check that out. Well, we're happy to have you back. Thank you so much. I missed y'all. Michael. Definitely. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.